Welcome everybody to this episode of Double Down with Double A. Hello YouTube fans. I am your gracious host, Double A, along with a very special guest here, somebody that hasn't been on my show in a while, but you know. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. I didn't thought you were gonna take care of that for me as the host of the show. I am the Renegade Arrested <laughs> JJ Williams. But you you already knew. Oh, <laughs> uh, jeez. Well, anyways, this is a pretty interesting topic, and uh, so far it looks like we might be getting our wish. For one, when in the hell are they going to do it? And two, if Eric Bischoff was in Vince McMahon's shoes right now, how long ago do you think it would have happened? And we're talking about John Cena turning heel. Well... When you first posed the question to me, I don't think you posed it as if Eric Bischoff was in control, when would it have happened? You just asked me when it should have happened. Yeah. Um, I can give you two different times when I think that it should have happened and it would have been successful without having to wait for this whole Cena Rock thing to go down. Option number one is WrestleMania 23 in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the crowd was solidly behind Sean that night, more so than they were when John fought, fought trips the year prior in Chi-Town. But the crowd was solidly behind HBK that night in Detroit. Oh yes, <laughs> I remember that night. Um, and option two would have been 2008 Eight, I believe I looked up when he came back and won the Rumble and then went on to Wrestlemania having just been out with the torn pec muscle he could have come back won the Rumble gone to Mania won the belt and then the next night on Raw come out like why are y'all cheering me now y'all been booing me for the better part of the last three years Fuck y'all, I came out here and did this shit for myself. Ooh. I didn't do it for you. I rehabbed, came back ahead of schedule, won the Rumble, won the title, because I wanted to, not because I wanted to do it for you guys. I know it, those two sound like very good possible ideas. You know, you know... I personally, I think another perfect opportunity was, uh, you know, you're kind of displaying it right now, is when he was forced to join the Nexus, you know, and they turned into a big fucking circus, if you will. So that's the problem there about that one, though, is he was forced to join the Nexus. True, but... So he was going to be the baby face in that scenario because he was doing something against his will. True, but that at the same time, they could have turned into something where he could have, you know, pretty much not, you know, Wade Barrett off, off of his uh, little pedestal and say, fuck you, I'm going to lead the, lead the new Nexus. I'm going to be the one to take the Nexus to the top. I'm going to be the one where, uh, you know, coincidental and Nexus, NWO, take this and flip it around where I could be that, you know top, you know, you know, heel leader of a fa faction, you know. <clears throat> yeah, but I think the problem with the whole Nexus scenario is, aside from the fact that he was forced into it, is it would have been too predictable. For him to be forced into Nexus, and then eventually come around, turn full on heel, and overthrow B Wade Barrett, would have been too predictable. Nobody would have seen it coming, either of the other two proposed hmm. ideas. Nobody would have seen him turning heel on Shawn Michaels coming, because they had just been tag champions. Nobody would have seen him pissing on the fans after coming back of his, from his injury coming. Hmm. That would have been a big ol' freaking curveball blindsiding people. Is that why they, you know, you think, personally I think, going down that is why they didn't do it with, you know, him whole feuding with Kane and Kane saying embrace your hate, you know, as opposed to Bryce yeah, Bob Hate. I think it would have been too forced. Hmm. 
I think Kane did his job in the fact that Kane's whole mission was to bring out a tougher side of Cena. Okay. And going into his match against The Rock, he needs to have a tougher side about him. He can't be, you know, five moves of doom and waltz out of Miami. He'll get he'll <clears throat> annihilated. He's already walking into a hostile situation. He's walking into The Rock's home. And then to do the same old shit that he always does, he's going to get booed out of the building regardless. So he needs to go in there looking like he did in those matches against Triple H and Shawn Michaels, where they actually pulled some fucking good matches out of him. Oh, yes. I Not do. the Kurt Angle caliber matches that he was wrestling when he first debuted, but better than the same old shit he's been doing. Oh, yeah. I, I do agree with that. You know, since he first got his hands on the title. But I think that's that was the whole purpose of the Kane thing, was just to give him that edge back. You know, kind of like that, that cheese-tastic chick flick, how Stella got her groove back. <laughs> really? Kane and Cena was to help Cena find his groove back, to get back to that, what we saw on Raw, where he just came out, mm -hmm. Thugonomics 101, and just murdered The Rock. Mm. The Rock got some good shots in on The Rock concert, but it took him ten minutes to do what it took Cena two minutes to do. Mm. Going, going back on that uh, Dr. Thugonomics thing, I stated earlier in the episode where it says, looks like we're finally starting to get a wish. Yes. And we kind of touched on that last night where I pretty much said, if, when they finally do turn him full on heel... He can't be the Doctor of Thugonomics again. A pers that's my personal opinion. Okay. I mean, and main reason why I say so, and I believe you disagreed with me on it, is... Mm -hmm. And I'll tell the fans why in a second. Go ahead and you know, get your point. The main reason what, what got him over as his over-the-top baby face was the Doctor of Thug Thugonomics. You can't go back to what, you know, it's... You have to, like, completely repackage him. Go back to when he was, you know, debuting against Kurt Angle, but displaying that, with displaying that ruthless aggression. Okay. And just unleashing on all these people that are just getting in his fucking way. Here's the problem, though. When John Cena debuted as that white meat ruthless aggression character, he was full on babyface. That's the only problem with your theory, is when he debuted and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kurt Angle, he debuted as an automatic babyface. It wasn't until he first adopted the the wigger, if you will, personality, trying to impersonate Vanilla Ice, coming out with, you know, <coughs> B-squared and everything, that he first started to turn heel. So... For the heel turn to be complete, he needs to go back to that. And my main point to you last night, and tell the fans, as long as he's dissing baby faces, he's going to be heel. When he starts dissing heels is when he becomes baby face. It's all just a matter in the battle rap. You know, you should know that better than anybody growing up in Detroit like you did. It's the art of the battle rap. I mean, hell... Y'all have watched 8 Mile, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, really? You had, to, you had to go there? I, yeah, I had to. It's the most <laughs> resourceful thing that people can go to. Is look at 8 Mile and all the freestyles there. You know? True. <coughs> True. When but M is just shooting the shit with his boys, you know, throwing disses left and right, you know, some of those disses could be considered heelish because, you know, he's dissing on his homies. But once he gets to the big, you know, battle scene... And starts dissing on, you know, Lotto and Papa Doc and all them. Immediate baby face. It's just a matter of who you're dissing. So if John Cena, the John Cena we saw on Monday with The Rock, comes out there and he starts ripping on Chris Jericho. If he starts ripping on Kane. If he starts ripping on... Jericho a heel? That's what I was getting to. If he starts ripping on all these heels, mm -hmm. he's going to be a face. Mm -hmm. But if he goes out there and he starts dissing CM Punk, if he starts dissing, you know, Kofi Kingston, 
talking about his nasty dreadlocks. If he starts dissing, you know, Evan Bourne, if he starts dissing Zack Ryder, he's going to be a heel. People are going to hate on him, thinking that he turned on his broski. You know? Well, that's all it takes. <clears throat> True. the right target. True. And I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And I, I'll be the first to admit, I totally marked out to it. Yeah. We, we all did. I totally that's why I'm rocking the hat. You know, and if I doubt, I doubt he's watching, but if he is, hey, you're starting to get me back. Don't screw it up. <laughs> um, but one thing I can say is if they do the ruthless aggression thing, they can tweak it a little bit. Yeah. They could tweak it a little bit to where he's not the and only thing that made it different when he came out as the ruthless aggr aggression, you know, guy was he went out after a top heel. If he would have came out with that same type of aggression at, you know, the Triple H or the Stone Colds back then, or even Hulk Hogan, everybody just like boo straight out on him. If you would have done the same thing, but on somebody else, right, or even a Taker, <laughs> what he, what he needs to do? Well, see, one of his big first feuds was with Taker, and Taker recognized him as the face, the future of the business, until he turned heel. Then he, then Taker started shitting on John. Mm -hmm. But what John needs to do is bring that wrestling style back with the Thugonomics persona. You know. Kind of, kind of adopt a little bit of what Dolph Ziggler has been doing. You know, it's not cocky if you can back the shit up. <clears throat> get on the microphone, talk shit, get in the ring, use those moves that he used against Kurt Angle and did in his early matches, and back the shit that he talks up. That's his problem as of late, is that he doesn't talk shit, and his ring work has got awful. Yes, yes. But if he starts talking shit and then getting in the ring and backing it up, people are going to be like, you know what? First they're going to boo him for talking shit. Then they're going to be like, well, you know what? He's talking shit, but everything he's saying is true. Ah. Well, I guess that's about it for, for right now. Uh, what do you th what do you th uh, what do you fans think? You know, leave your questions and comments. You know, in the comment box. I know we're gonna get trolls. I mean, they're unavoid they're unavoidable. I do have one thing I want to ask you though, off <clears throat> off wrestling topic. Okay. Just because I'm sitting here, I have to do this. What did you think about Detroit getting their asses handed t two games in a row while they're in California? Uh, okay, on that note, I'm going to have to do an infamous walk-off. I'm leaving my own fucking show because of this shit. <laughs> See you next time. This was Double Down with Double A, and I just made him walk.